parents have been going viral at the expense of their children's emotional and mental health. Parents have been convincing their children or giving their children the idea that we're going to bake together, we're going to spend time together, and on top of that, we're going to record it. Some of these parents are people that are, you know, always on social media, always taking pictures, always taking videos and posting. And we could say that it's their job, it's their hobby. And we know children that they love participating in what we as their mommies and their daddies do. So you can just imagine how excited they were when they thought I'm going to bake with mommy and I'm going to record this and she's going to post it only to be met with the reality that mommy just wanted to go viral at my expense, at the expense of my shame and my embarrassment. The unfortunate thing is that some of these kids are so young and so small that they just look confused like what is happening. There are older ones who joke around, who laugh and we're like, oh, you know, I'm going to hit you back. But there are young ones who are like, what just happened? I thought we were having a nice moment, a mommy and daughter moment. We're having a moment where I'm coming into your world of baking, into your world of recording, your world of content creation. Why did she just do that, mommy? Take a look at what I'm talking about. I've got an egg here. Hi guys, we're gonna make pasta. And we're gonna crack one egg. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay, so what am I showing you? An egg. An egg. You ready? Yeah. I don't like that. I'm gonna You're gonna crack it? Okay, you crack that one, I crack this one, okay? Mama's gonna go first. Go first. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna crack the egg. Yeah. Mommy, make me crack it. You okay, baby? Yeah. You okay? I want to crack it. Oh, you didn't see where you was going. I didn't see where I was going. Yeah, he shouldn't do that to people. I shouldn't do that with the people? Yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna do it to people. The egg. Okay, I'll crack it. But I'm gonna crack it, okay? Can I crack it though? Ow! <laughs> that hurt! I wanted to crack it! You did crack it! <laughs> Your head cracked it! <laughs> And now yeah. we're putting the eggs. Um, stop it! Biological. What's <laughs> on here? I'm sorry. Oh! What's on my hair? Oh my god, you want to have eggs in your hair? Hey. She does. Hey, what happened? You put an egg in my hair! Okay, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Just one more. <laughs> she got eggs in your hair, no, boy. Now you head. smell. Yeah. You smell stinky. You can mix it now. You want you smell? <laughs> you smell stinky. You can mix it now. <laughs> oh. Sad, right? The second incident is of mountain climbers who were on a mission to set a new world record um, on this mountain. Unfortunately, during the mission, uh, one of their assistants fell and was in a very, very critical near death um, condition. And instead of the people saying, okay, guys, we need to just put a pause on that mission, put a pause on that world record and assist this guy, get this guy the necessary medical attention, emergency attention that he so badly requires, they proceeded. We have one person who chose to stand and help the gentleman while the risk went on 
on the mission, go get that world record, go hit that world record while somebody is in critical condition, might be dying and unfortunately ended up dying. Take a look at this. Mohammed Hassan, a father of three, had slipped from a narrow ledge at around 8,200 metres. But a video shows part of a group climbing over him, pushing on to reach the summit. We are very happy to be here. Record-breaking mountaineer Kirsten Harila was among the climbers determined to set a new record, filming this video before she says she knew her son was dead. Harila, though, believes she and her team did everything they could. It's a very, very narrow trail and it's super steep on this side and the, the the snow condition this year was very hard to walk on and i don't know and i didn't see actually when he fell but we were there uh, when he fell i don't know and i didn't see actually when he fell but we were there uh, when he fell in the dark it was uh, many hours before this was filmed and we tried for hours to save him so in this image that we're seeing as you say in the daylight is mm -hmm. Mohammed Hassan already dead? Is that your estimation? Uh, oh, I cannot answer for that. I wasn't there. We were above and we were just behind him when he fell. And he was number two in this uh, queue of people. And we saw him hanging upside down. And very early we decided we need to try to get him turned around. So we put up another ice anchor and we took another rope and first Lama went into him and tried to turn him around. We tried to rescue him for many hours and it's a very, very uh, challenging and dangerous mountain and we were probably on the most dangerous place and it was an accident and we tried what we could. It's really terrifying. They had to literally step over this body when he was lying there on this little ledge, which is like this. All these people needed to pass him. He was still alive. In the next picture I saw, okay, they are up. There was just one person rubbing him. Uh, I said, why, why didn't they brought him down? Some of the climbers have now met with her son's family who are coming to terms with their loss. But for those who were there with him, at the end of his life, questions over whether they did all they could to save him. Pretty, pretty sad, right? The third and final incident is of Oprah Winfrey and Dwayne Johnson, also known as The Rock, who came out publicly uh, to say, guys, we need to put money together for the survivors of uh, Hawaii, the fire survivors, that is. Uh, but I just need us to just remember that these people's net worths is 2.5 billion and 800 million respectively. So just one of them, um, or just the two of them, could have come up with the money, gave it to the people of, of Hawaii without even telling us anything. Or if maybe it was too much money for them to part with, they could have called their millionaire and billionaire friends to start up something and give to the people of, of Hawaii without any of us ever knowing. Yet they wanted to come to the poor and the middle class people to ask them or ask us to give to this cause when we are already, you know, in a not so good, cozy situation financially with everything that is happening in the world. But I guess if they gave in secret, if they just did it between the two of them, then they were not going to be well known for their philanthropy and their charitable works, would they? So instead, they did this. We were so concerned about what was happening in Maui that we were texting back and forth. And I read this article that Dolly Parton had given money in her community. And I said, I think this is the answer. You said, I think that's the answer. I said, I love it. And so we have created the People's Fund of Maui that will put money directly in the hands of the people who need it right now. So if you send a donation, just click where you see below and send a donation. That money is going to go to one of many residents who have been displaced in Maui, we guarantee. That's right, I know a lot of people out there as Oprah and I have been finding are just uh, having a hard time trusting 
where the money goes, what organizations should I send money to, how can I help. Uh, in this case, the fund that we created with a lot of hard work from a lot of hardworking people yeah. who all care about these people of, of Maui, uh, as Oprah was saying, it is a clean, direct, from you, directly to their hands, and right away with some real immediacy, because as we're finding, as you guys around the world know, with disasters like this, the number one need is money. Is money. Is money. In hand. And, and so people being that. able to have their own agency, being able yes. to make decisions for themselves about what they need and what their family needs, that's our goal, is to get that to the people now. And so we appreciate any support that you can give all the people who were calling me and texting me and messaging me and saying, what do I do? What do I do? This is what you do. <laughs> you know. The People's Fund of, of Maui. Maui. <laughs> Let me know what you think of these three incidents in the comment section below. Am I you know, overreacting? Am I making a big deal of things that really shouldn't be a big deal? Or do you find them to be big deals as well? Uh, back to you and back to me. What is the motive and what is the intention behind the things that we do? Why do we record what we record, post what we post, say what we say, do what we do, get into missions that we get into, do charitable uh, deeds that we do, right? Is the mission really genuine or is it about the number of followers or subscribers? Uh, how many claps we're going to get? How many pats on the back we're going to get? How many accolades we are going to get? How many records we're going to break? How many number one positions are we going to receive? Is it about that or is it about selflessness? Is it about the next person? Is it uh, things that are inspired by empathy, by compassion, by concern for the next person and their well-being. Just to help us um, act right, do right, there's a portion of scripture that speaks very well regarding this and that is in Philippians 2 and it reads, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. As we always say here, the things of the world um, are very different from the things of God and the things of God are like foolishness. The wisdom of God is like foolishness to the world. Like what the verse is telling us to do, like according to the standards of the world, that's silly. You cannot elevate somebody else above yourself. You cannot, um, you know, do something without yourself in mind. You know, it's all about self, self, self. And the word of God is saying someone else, someone else, someone else. It's about obedience. It's about being a servant. It's about caring about the interests of somebody else more than your own interest, right? And if you are in a situation, for example, climbing a mountain and you are going after that world record, according to this, what you are supposed to do is consider the interest of that man before you consider your mission, the money you've paid to be here, the training you've done to be here, the world record that you have been envisioning for all these years, right? And it's not an easy thing. The things of God are not easy things. That's why we should always come back and, you know, let that be the standard, let that be the framework from which we work, from which we do all that we do, right? And that is what I'm trying to do through this video to remind us that it's not about the subscribers, it's not about the views, it's not about the followers, it's not about the fame, it's not about the money we get, it's not about what people are saying about you at work, that you are now willing to step on people's toes, that you are now willing to, you know, get people out of the way so that you can be seen by the CEO, so that you can receive the accolades and claps, you know, more than somebody else. It is not about that. You know, our social status, our fame, our whatever it is that we are seeking after can never be as important as our relationships with people in real life.
you know, and it can never be as important as our relationship with God Almighty. And we can never lie, you know, we can lie to people and ourselves. I don't think we can really lie to ourselves. Some people seem to lie to themselves, but I think you can't fully, fully lie to yourself, right? When you are sitting alone with God, you will know, man, that no, you know, in your conscience, you'll know that, yeah, I'm here praying to God and saying all of this to God, but the way I treated that person, what I did to so-and-so, how, the reason why I posted that thing, that selfishness that I was engaged in is not right. So let us value our relationship with real people in real life and our relationship with God Almighty above accolades and records and fame and how people see us and how people view us, right? Let Philippians 2 be the model that we live by. Let Jesus Christ be the model that we look to. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. Please share it with someone. Please leave a comment below. Please click the like button. If you haven't subscribed, let me know why you choose not to subscribe, okay? Until next time, please click the video on your screen now and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.